Hi everybody, I'm Rick Beato. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to figure out any chord by ear, no matter how complex it is. Now, many of you have seen my son Dylan figure out these impossible chords that span the whole keyboard that use chord layer, layered on another chord, that use chords layered upon other chords. I'm gonna show you the strategies that I taught him in order to teach you how to do the same thing. We're gonna go through some of the chords from Dylan's videos. I'm gonna demonstrate them on the keyboard so you can see how they're laid out, and then I'm gonna explain the strategies, how to listen, think, and analyze these super complex chords. Let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna do some polychords for you. These are really gonna be hard, you ready? What's this? C augmented flat augmented. Okay, this first chord that Dylan just identified is C augmented over D flat augmented. I'll play it together. Now that sounds like a really, really complex chord, but what he's doing is following these basic principles. The first principle is, is there a chord that's built in thirds? Okay, well there's actually two chords that are built in thirds. That's actually the second principle. Are there more than one chord that are built in thirds? Each of these chords are built in major thirds. C augmented is a major third, major third. D flat augmented is major third, major third and they're separated by a minor third, okay? So, also, there is a, an F major seven chord right in the middle of this. But really, the next thing to listen for are what are the outer notes, and what is the relationship of them? They're a perfect fifth apart, so you, that's the next thing I want you to realize so that you know what the range of the chord is. So remember, are there any chords that are built in thirds? Are there multiple notes that are built in thirds? And are there any recognizable intervals in them? So there are, immediately, Dylan is hearing a C augmented and a D flat augmented separately. So a way to practice this is to play the chord, lift up one hand, play the chord, lift up the other hand, and then try to sing, sing the bass note, da, da, right, and I say, well, that's not quite it, right? Because I say, you wanna go, bum, 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 and then, do, do, okay? Now, you're hearing this note here, so it's very easy to hear that D flat major triad in there, okay? But listen for the, if there are any chords built in thirds, there are two. Listen for the outer notes. See what the interval is so you know what the range is, which it's a perfect fifth. And then decide if you can split the chord up and name it as something over something, which you can. In this case, you can name it. C augmented over D flat augmented. That means above. What's this chord? Now the second chord, you'll notice it took Dylan a second to identify. He recognized that there were two major chords, but it took him a second because they are both in first inversion. He said A flat, and he heard the A flat major chord on the top, and then he hears an A major chord on the bottom. So it's A flat major over A major, but this is in, in, is in first inversion, and this one is in first inversion. So the top and bottom notes are separated by a perfect fifth, and he can hear there's a major chord there, and he can hear there's a major chord there, both in first inversion. And they are separated by a minor third. You can hear that when you listen to the chord. Da, da. Da, da. It's this chord. A minor over D flat major. Great. Once again, it's subtly different from the first two chords. He said A minor over D flat major. Once again, he recognizes 
that there are two different types of chords, but he can clearly hear that the top chord is a minor chord. He recognizes that. It's in inversion. It's in first inversion. So it's an A minor chord, C, E, A, over D flat major. He can really hear that. See, and he's hearing this flat sixth interval between the outer voices. He's listening for that. So he knows what the limited range is. So once he's got those, then he listens to this. He says, are there two recognizable chords in here? He says, yes, A minor, D flat major. So check it out. Take away one, clearly hear the A minor. Take away the A minor, and there's the D flat major. Now, you don't need to know that these chords are those exact ones. You should just be able to tell it's a minor chord. If you look at them together, there's your root position major chord, and then you have a minor chord built off the flat six. Okay? So it's a minor chord with a flat six in inversion over a major chord. What's this chord? E add 9 over F major. E add 9 over F major, and this is the voicing I'm playing. So the first thing Dylan realizes is that there was an add 9 chord. That's E add 9. And then you have F major in second inversion, so C, F, A. He can hear this major second interval. That's another thing I want you to listen for, is is there any type of interval in the middle of the chord that's recognizable? You can hear that second in there, but Dylan can instantly hear that E add nine chord. And you can tell that that's a, because of the perfect fourth interval, it's a second inversion major chord. Once again, outer voices, is that you have a minor six interval and then the inner voices which really are not that useful you have to hear the chord together pull away the bottom chord and you have the add nine that you can easily hear pull away the da, da, da. you can easily hear that da, 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 da. Okay, this next chord that Dylan's identifying is D major seven with a flat third. So the first thing that you need to listen for is to hear the spread triad right at the bottom. Bum, bum, bum. Da, major seventh, da, flat third. So you really have a D minor chord, a D major chord, a D major seven chord, and then D major seven with a flat third. Bum, 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 bum. This chord. E, C, D, G, A, F sharp. This next chord Dylan is identifying is this. E, C, D, G, A, F sharp. Okay, so what do you notice about it? Well, you hear this. You hear that interval of a major nine. And then in the interior of the chord, I'm listening for these two sets of major seconds. Okay, you have you have these parallel fifths right there, or you have two major seconds that are that are spread by a perfect fourth. So you've got this here, and then You can also hear this. You hear that major seventh interval. That should be something that jumps out immediately at you. But once again, this chord can be split in, in two. So the left to half is this. Ba, 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 right? And then, da, da, da. That would be part of an E Aeolian scale. 
beautiful, beautiful sound. <laughs> A major over B flat major. Dylan names the notes, and it's this. B flat, D, F, A, C sharp, E. Ba, 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 ba. Once again, he hears a major triad on the top, and another major triad that's a half step above below it. He's listening for those outer notes, he hears the tritone but he can hear those two independent chords and the fifth of the one chord is a major third away from the root of the next chord. But there's A chord. If you think about it, that's what he's hearing. Listen, think, analyze. Last chord, this is a polychord. Tell me the name of this chord. A flat seven over F major seven sharp five. What are the notes? F, A, C sharp, E, A flat, C, E flat, G flat. Perfect. A flat seven over F major seven sharp five. There's A flat seven. That's F major seven. That would be F major 7, it's F major 7 with a sharp 5th, so. Dill, I asked him to sing the notes. Da, da, da. Do, da, do, do. So, what does he recognize? He recognizes that there's a dominant 7th chord, and he recognizes that there's a major 7th chord with a sharp 5th that are a major third apart. So he's splitting the chord. He can hear that there's a major third interval between the two chords. And then he hears this. So it's... There's actually many chords in this. You have, you have F augmented. You have A major. You have C sharp minor. You have... E augmented, you have A flat major, and then you have C diminished. <laughs> so you can look at it that way too. But really, it's just those two seventh chords together. A flat seven over F major seven sharp five. This chord. C diminished over B flat major. Great, uh, sing an E. E. Great. C diminished, he recognizes that there's a triad there, and he recognizes that there's a triad there. The only difference to this, this B-flat major, is that it's in first inversion. So, with a third in the bass. Ba -da 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 -da. And they're separated by a whole step. Ba -da 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 -da. I listen to the outer notes of the chord, which is a major third, but really, this is really clear that it's a diminished chord with a first inversion major chord, okay? And you break the singing it. Bum, 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 bum. What is this chord? E major over A minor. Great, sing G. G. Great. The next chord, Dylan identifies as E major over A minor. Now this is a little tricky because both chords are in inversion. You have a second inversion E major chord, okay? And you recognize that by that perfect fourth interval there. And it's a major chord. And then you have a minor chord, A minor, that's in first inversion. That would be root position. Okay, so he hears that minor chord like that, and then he hears major chord and second inversion that's connected by a major second. His ear instantly identifies that there are two chords next to each other. He hears and hears. Uh, tell me the name of this chord. 
Definitely. Can you sing the notes? B flat, A flat, F, G, B flat, E flat, A flat. Excellent. This next chord happens to be one of my favorites. He calls it D flat Lydian. Da, 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 da. But then I asked him to sing the notes. And he says D flat, A flat, F, G. D flat, A flat, F, G. B flat, E flat, A flat. Well, the first thing he hears is this big fat spread triad. So I want you, you need to listen to see if you hear any triads in here. He hears that, then he hears this right next to it. He hears the third and the sharp four right next to each other in a big fat spread triad. And then he hears this structure. He looks for other constant structures. He hears that chordal harmony. Da, da, da. So you hear some major seconds there that are part of this D flat major chord with a sharp four. Here's that, then here's this, then here's this. D flat, A flat, F, G, B flat, E flat, A flat. Uh, I'm gonna play a chord. I want you to listen to it and sing the notes. F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, D sharp. So Dylan identifies this first chord as, here's F sharp in the bass, and then I play this on top. So we've got C sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and then D, E, A, D. Okay, so here's this. He can hear this chord right there that's a sus two, a D sus two, right there with the root on the top. So here's a D sus two, and he hears a D flat sus four. And he's listening to this, a tritone there, so that he doesn't have to sing it all in the same octave. He's going da 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 da. Here's this structure, he hears this structure, he hears that, he hears this, and he hears this. F sharp sus two and D sus two put together. And then he says F sharp, C sharp, D, and then B flat, B. So, what does he notice out of this? Well, he hears this, that major third interval, then he hears that major seventh, and then the root again. And then he hears that B flat, which is the, the flat sixth interval. Okay, here's it's a half step above. So he's listening for that. And then he's hearing that there's a flat nine interval at the top, which is very obvious. Once again, D, F sharp, C sharp, D, B flat, B. All right. In the bass, there's an obvious perfect fifth. F, C, then E flat, F, A flat, B flat, D, E flat, F, A flat, B flat, D. So there's two different structures. There's a perfect fifth interval. Then he hears that this is built off the flat seven E flat, and here's the root again. Da, 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 da. Very tough, this is a double polychord. Listen closely and... D minor over F sharp major over B major over C major. Sing D minor. B F A. How about B major? B D sharp F sharp. Sing. Okay, this double polychord is so tricky that I had to raise the camera up so you could see the whole chord. Now I play this first, and by the time I play that, Dylan instantly identifies that this is a major triad in the bass, a spread triad with a major triad in root position built off the major seventh. So you got B major over C major. So before I even get to the left hand, he already knows this instantly. He recognizes the sound of a 
major triad with another major triad built off the major seventh. Okay, so you, there's your B major, there's your C major. They're there together. By the time we get to the upper chord, which is this, okay, all he needs to listen for now is the top part of the chord. And he immediately hears that there's a root position minor chord and he hears this F sharp major chord that's in second inversion. That's the only hard part of this chord. If you can recognize that this is a major triad, spread triad, with another major chord built off the major seventh, okay? The, that's how you do it. So you're hearing, that would be C major, that's B major over C major. And then he hears this, and he hears this D minor chord, and this F sharp major chord is the only one that he needs to listen for. And he hears this, and he knows instantly that that is a second inversion major triad. And these two triads are spread by a major third interval. So once again, so he has D minor over F sharp major over B major over C major. Sing and write down this. F, C, G, A, E, F, A, D, B, F, A. Very good. This next chord, Dylan identifies the notes individually, and I'll play the chord for you. F, C, G, A, E flat, A, B flat. Well, for him, this is easy. E flat Lydian, F major, add nine. Instantly recognizes there's a triad on top that's built off the flat seven. And it's a Lydian triad, and here's F add nine. Just in spread position, so. F, C. So, or, I want you to sing from the top down. This one. <laughs> Write it down. This next chord is one of my favorites. Now, this is not easily identifiable. He sings A flat G. E flat, D flat, B flat, A flat, C. Remember, listen, think, analyze. If it can't be analyzed by an obvious chord or series of chords, listen for the intervals. Listen for the half step, listen for the series of seconds, and then you hear the low bass note that's a sixth above this, a minor sixth above, so. You should be able to instantly play these chords and sing them. Name and sing all the notes and then write them down and sing them. Are you ready? Ready. Okay, listen carefully. Here we go. B flat G flat A flat C F B E flat G B flat D E A. <laughs> okay, this chord gets into the realms of impossible, but. Here's the logic behind how Dylan is hearing this. As soon as I play that, he hears this, which is F Lydian in, in second inversion. And he hears a D flat sus4. And then he hears ba ba ba. Da, da, da. Okay, so you got, and then, so he hears this E flat major chord here, and then he hears the D sus two that's down a half step from it, because he's recognizing that. So, you've got sus two, D sus two, E flat major, F Lydian, D flat sus four. D flat, G flat, A flat, C, F, B, 
E flat, G, B flat, D, E, A. Well, if I can do it, you can do it. That's all for now. Please hit the subscribe button here and become a subscriber of my Everything Music YouTube channel. And if you're interested in the Beato book, you can write me at rickbeato1 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.